The U.S. federal minimum wage of $7.25 has not increased since July of 2009, more than a decade ago. Ever since, there has been a feverish debate about whether the minimum wage should increase or not, with Democrats typically arguing in favor of an increase and Republicans typically arguing against it. To be fair, unlike many topics in politics, there are really good arguments on both sides here. Low-wage workers are struggling, and raising the federal minimum wage would clearly help them. And yet, there surely are some small businesses who can't maintain their operations with a higher federal minimum wage, which will either result in their closing or their raising prices that we, the consumers, will then have to pay. I'm by no means arguing that one of these positions is stronger or more economically sound than the other. But whenever we debate something like this, it's critical that we understand the data of what we're actually debating. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, we're going to try to understand some of the critical data that underlies the debate behind raising the minimum wage or not. To be clear, this will not be an attempt to persuade you one way or another. Rather, for us to begin to even have the conversation of whether raising the minimum wage is a good idea or not, we need to all be working off the same set of facts. My goal in this episode is to provide you with just that. So let's dive in and look at where we are in terms of the federal minimum wage. This chart here shows us what the federal minimum wage was over the last 75 years. As you can see, over that time period, the federal minimum wage has grown quite a bit, from a low of just 40 cents per hour in 1947 to its current high of $7.25. You can see that every so often, Congress is elected to raise the minimum wage to reflect the fact that the cost of living tends to go up with time. And you could easily make an argument for raising the federal minimum wage based on just this chart. It has been 12 years since the federal minimum wage has been increased, which is the longest period without an increase ever. The longest period was 10 years, back when the minimum wage was raised from $5.15 in 1997 to $5.85 in 2007. So perhaps we're due for another increase. On the other hand, you could also easily argue that the federal minimum wage is as high as it has ever been. So why raise it now? The problem with that second argument, though, is that this chart is incredibly misleading. This is what we call nominal minimum wage, or the actual dollar value of what workers earn. The problem is that this chart doesn't adjust for inflation. Now, I talk about inflation in much greater detail in a different video that I'll link to below, but the quick version of it is that it's totally unfair to compare things like prices or wages over time without considering the fact that the same amount of money could buy very different things depending on what year we're talking about. In 1947, you could buy a can of Coke for five cents. You'd have a pretty hard time doing that today. In other words, the value of five cents was much higher in 1947 than it is today. You could buy a lot more with the same amount of money. So it's really unfair to compare nominal values like this. Instead, we need to adjust those values to put them all on the same level. This is called adjusting for inflation. And there are a number of ways to do that, but I'll use the most common approach, which uses the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. Basically, I can convert those numbers to tell me what they would be able to buy in today's dollars. Now we have this line, which tells us the minimum wage over the last 75 years, but in terms of 2021 dollars. In other words, yes, the minimum wage was only 75 cents in 1951, but today that 75 cents would be able to buy you a little more than $8 worth of stuff. And the reason that this graph zigzags up and down is that every time the minimum wage is increased, you get a pop. But then inflation kicks in, and the value of that increase goes down. And this keeps repeating more or less every time the minimum wage is increased. Looking at our most recent increase to $7.25, we see the same thing. When the minimum wage was increased in 2009, in terms of today's dollars, that works out to be about $8.75. And actually, if you look at the average inflation-adjusted value of the minimum wage over the last 75 years, it was just under $8.50. And, again, we might want to consider what this means for both sides of the debate around raising the minimum wage. On the one hand, you could easily make the case that in terms of inflation-adjusted value, the current minimum wage is well below what it was when it was increased in 2009, and also well below the average value over the last 75 years. On the other hand, the call for a $15 minimum wage would actually put the wage at the highest level in the history of our country, higher even than it was in the 60s when the inflation-adjusted minimum wage was just slightly above $12, at least for a short period. Now, to be very clear, these data don't tell us what is morally or ethically correct to do. If you believe that the lowest wage workers should earn more than double of what they earn right now, well, you likely have very solid ground to stand on in terms of equity for all individuals, especially in the face of exploding financial inequality. 
On the other hand, if you prefer a more conservative approach and think that raising the federal minimum wage to the highest it's ever been could cause harm to employers and the economy more broadly, you have a point too. The point of all of this is to make the data clear so that we can at least have a civil conversation coming from a shared, honest understanding of reality. And to add a bit more depth to our understanding, one thing we might consider is just how many people would be affected by an increase in the federal minimum wage. After all, as you can see in this map here, the effective minimum wage varies dramatically across the country due to things like differing state and local minimum wage laws. The New York Times recently performed an analysis on what the average effective minimum wage was for all employees in the US. Basically, they took a look at all workers earning minimum wages in their respective locations and computed an average based on what they actually earn. What they found is that the average worker on a minimum wage is actually earning just under $12 an hour. In other words, yes, those who live in the states where the federal minimum wage is the floor do earn only $7.25 an hour. But if you look at all workers earning whatever the minimum wage is in their particular area, the reality is quite different. And beyond that, the same report looked to see how many workers are actually earning the federal minimum wage. It turns out that as recently as 2018, of all workers who earned some form of minimum wage, only 10.6% actually earned just $7.25. Now to be clear, that's still 700,000 people, which is a lot. But most workers, nearly 6 million of them, who are paid whatever the minimum wage allows wherever they are, earn a fair bit more. Well, now popping back to this map for a second, it's pretty clear that the workers who earn the lowest amount mostly reside in certain parts of the country, namely the South and parts of the Midwest. It is those workers who would benefit most from an increase in a federal minimum wage, since many other states already have considerably higher state minimum wages. Putting this all together, there are really three things to consider. First, is the federal minimum wage too low? On the one hand, it clearly is. We can see here that the federal minimum wage is well below the inflation adjusted value when it was last increased in 2009 and well below the average federal minimum wage over the last 75 years. On the other hand, it's not really clear that, at least using these historical data, that a $15 minimum wage is at all consistent with the history of our country. Second, it's important to realize that most workers on a minimum wage don't actually earn $7.25, because most workers live in places where the local minimum wage is a fair bit higher. So, raising the federal minimum wage to any amount would benefit some people, but not as many as might appear at first glance. And third, these data tell us what the state of the country is and what it was but they don't tell us what it should be. There is a very reasonable argument to be made that regardless of the fact that $15 an hour is higher than any federal minimum wage ever, and regardless of the fact that most minimum wage workers already earn around $12 an hour, we should still raise the federal minimum wage to $15 and maybe even more. But this now turns to a question of morality and what we want our country to be. The goal of these videos is to provide you with an understanding of the data you need to help work through the complexity of topics like this, but it is up to you to then decide what moral lens you want to apply to interpreting the data. Once we all can agree on the core facts in front of us and agree how to interpret those facts, only then can we shift to the far more complex topic of deciding what to do next. My hope is that this video helps you get a bit closer to that point, at least on the topic of federal minimum wage. Finally, as always, thanks so much for watching.